All right, quick question here. Time to answer a quick question. Does Acts chapter 5, verse 42, um, does that prove door-to-door -door evangelism? Okay, I had a brother ask me this. It's a good question, the way he phrased it. Acts chapter 5, verse 42 says, And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So they were preaching Jesus in you know, the gospel there. It's obviously what it's talking about, teaching and preaching Jesus Christ. It was daily in the temple and in every house. Okay, so... Would that, obviously, it's not talking about the thing of going out and inviting people to church. And we'd like to invite you to church this week. We have, you know, couples week or something like this. No, no, no. It's not doing that. But the point is, were they actually going and knocking on doors and preaching Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel? And the answer to that is, no. What's going on here? Well, the short answer would be, when they're going, you know, in the temple there, daily in the temple, they're preaching Jesus Christ in a public forum in the Jewish synagogue. That's what it's going on there. These were not Christian temples. All right? These are Jews in the early part of the book of Acts, and they're going to the synagogue, to the temple. And later on in the book of Acts, you see that they're actually being stoned and things and being cast into prison when they go into the temple. So word got around about this teaching of Jesus Christ, and the Jews were like, not anymore. You're not going to preach here anymore. But early on in the book of Acts, Acts is a transition book, they are preaching in the temple. So they're going, they're preaching in the temple, and the people are saying, hey, for fear of the Jews, we probably shouldn't say much more here. Can you come with me to my house? Let me show you the proof of that. Turn to Acts chapter 10. So when it says house to house, it's not that they're going and knocking on the doors, you know, into every house, daily in the temple, and in, in every house. They're going to the temple preaching publicly, and people are saying, come back here with me to my house. Let's look about this. Acts chapter 10, verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which, which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause whereof ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in, and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. I like to see the modern pope uh, follow in the f uh, footsteps of the first pope. <laughs> they say Peter was the first pope, but, you know, the popes of today, they allow people to fall down and worship him and kiss their foot and everything else. And they don't say, Stand up, I'm just a man. But Peter did. Two different groups, by the way. Catholics are not Christians. But let's continue. Verse 27. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or to come or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I went, as soon as I was sent for, I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. And a lot of them get saved. Okay? So he was in the temple throughout the early part of the book of Acts, but word is getting around, hey, this Peter guy, he's preaching some interesting things here. And again, you're dealing early part of the book of Acts. There are still some of the miracles and sign gifts going on there. So you have a Gentile. The Lord is starting to show these Jews. They're just going to the, you know, the Jews in the temple. See? But God's starting to show them now, no, actually, you need to start talking to the Gentiles as well. See? So that's why an angel comes to a Gentile and says, hey, send to Peter and have him come to your house. 
he is requesting Peter to come to his house. The angel didn't come down and say, hey, Peter, I want you to head down to Caesarea there and just start knocking doors. You know, invite the people to church. No, that's not what was going on. Go to Acts chapter 16. I'll read about Paul. Acts chapter 16, verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. They went out and they're speaking, they're witnessing for Jesus Christ. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, who, who's, or, excuse me, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. Get a hold of that one too. That she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. She's inviting them into her house. You see? And I've had this, this opportunity different times um, where I've been able to actually go out and I've seen people and I've gotten a chance to witness to them and things. Uh, and they say, hey, come on, come on in. I want to hear a little bit more about this or whatever else. You go into their house. See? It's not the same thing as you go in and just, we're going to canvas the neighborhood here. We got three hours of Saturday morning or Thursday night or whenever else you do your visitation. And you go out and you see how many doors you can knock and see how many people you can lead through phony little prayers of one, two, three, repeat after me. That isn't it at all. You know? It's really something. Acts chapter 16, verse 22. It says here, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. And having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so, went, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Hmm. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. You see it? And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoice, believing in, how, in God with all his house. You see it there. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this, saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them, and departed. Okay. So, the answer to the question there is, what is this thing about daily in the temple, and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Well, think about it. Preaching Jesus Christ is the gospel. What about teaching? They're teaching people about Jesus Christ. See, it wasn't like modern times here where you come and you invite people to church, knock on their door, and they come to the church, and, or come to the door, and they say, hey, we'd like to come to our church. Here's a, here's a brochure or a pamphlet or you know, and you do your little your little uh, spiel, and the person's going, "Okay, I'm just going to do whatever they say here because I want to just get out of this thing and whatever, and whatever I got to do to get them off my porch." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, sure, yeah, I'll show up at your house, and I I got to pray this prayer. Okay, I'll, you know, and they pray the prayer and stuff like this. See, it's not the same thing. It's what was being mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter five, verse forty-two. There, 
that we talked about earlier. All right, what was happening there is completely different than from our modern day door-to-door -door evangelism thing. And in the New Testament, what you're going to see is they're preaching out in public places and the people are oftentimes saying, hey, I'd like to know more about this. Could you come with me? I'll show you one other example here before we close this little short study. Acts chapter 17, verse 32 through 34. Paul is preaching in a open place with all these pagan philosophers and things standing around there um, in Mars Hill. Kind of funny because the next town up that way, north of us, is called Mars Hill. I'm not joking. But uh, it says here, Acts chapter 17, verse 32, And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So, part, so Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men claved on, unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Okay? Now, it doesn't say that they went back to their home, but the whole point is, this is how ministry is supposed to work. You see people out in public, and I, like I said, I have done this thing, you know, in the 21st century. So don't say, well, nobody does it that way. Yes, they do. Then you can do it this way. I'll grant you, the, the doors of the gospel are closing very fast in this country. But the whole thing is, as Christians, we are supposed to be witnessing in public when the Lord gives you opportunity. Okay, go out there, put out tracts and things. Sometimes your gospel tracting is just a matter of that person, you're giving them contact between them and the Lord. All right, and what they do with it is between them and God. God can lead them into the truth. All right, um, but if you get into a situation where you actually talk to somebody and they say, I'd like to talk to you more about this, please, could you come back, you know, to my house or whatever else? I mean, be careful that they're not some weirdo or whatever. I mean, if you can tell somebody's really fervently wanting to know about the Lord, certainly go spend some time with that person. Uh, it's a really neat time of fellowship you'll have there, um, you know, if they get saved and things. And preach Jesus Christ to them, but also teach them about what the Bible says. And, you know, again, I've done this thing with people, and I, you know, have met with people, and, hey, do you need a Bible? Uh, can I give you some Christian music to listen to? Can I do this or can I do that? we got some books that I can give you to help you in your Christian walk and whatever. Uh, that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. Um, so if anybody tries to use this thing, Acts 5.42, to prove that uh, Christians were going door to door and inviting people to church and stuff like this, no. That's not what's going on there in Acts 5.42. Um, it's the people were, they were preaching and teaching you know, Jesus Christ in the temple. And then for those who wanted to hear, they were saying, could you come with us to our house? All right. That's what's going on there. So hopefully that answers the question. Good question, actually. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.